So this is something I come up with when Alan and Aragorn come over again. And I was like, at the time I used a protein semi-track. And Alan was like, what is the protein semi-track? Well, you track your protein and track your scale weight. And then what you do is you make weekly adjustments for your client or for yourself if you're using this approach. You look at your weekly weight average. You can look at progress pictures. You can look at how, or how close feel on yourself. And then you make adjustments to your diet based on that data you've collected. You either eat a little bit less or you eat a little bit more. And it, again, it doesn't put much strain on your, your day-to-day -day life. But what it does do is by having those other measurements, it, give, it gives you more concrete data about whether you're in a surplus or in a deficit. It allows you to adjust portions based on that information. It ensures you get adequate protein and it allows for a wider variety of foods. Some days you may have more carbs. Some days you may have more fat. It gives you that flexibility. However, it may not provide enough control for those which are looking at physique or performance related goals. It needs a, a good nutritional age and good nutritional understanding to be able to make those good judgment calls. So method nine, we're looking at calorie tracking, focusing on the big rocks first. Eric Helms mentions this quite a lot in his module. So energy balance is what it is. Like it is what it is. Like you can't say calories doesn't, don't matter. We know that you're in the academy, you're obviously an educated individual. So you could use a notepad. You could just start tracking food and you can just track the calories you're getting. Especially if you're getting pre-cooked foods from a supermarket and it have that nutritional information on the back, you'll be able to track the calories. So again, it's not asking you to do too much. Uh, look how they weigh uh, is responding, look how their weight is responding based on those calories. And then you can say, okay, we're gonna drop some calories or we're gonna increase some calories based on their goal. You could use a calorie tracking device like a MyFitnessPal. But my thing is, if you're already tracking calories then, and you're using an app, then it's probably best to probably track your macronutrients anyway because it does that in the first place. So similar pros allows you uh, to dictate fairly well whether someone's in a surplus or deficit, especially if they're consistently hitting those calories and there's no real massive changes in their daily activity levels. Allows for a wide variety of food. And some of the cons is the temptation is to try and track calories expended. You get this all the time with their wearable devices and they're going, okay, I walked 20,000 steps today, so I'm just gonna eat more. That's what you tend to get all of the time. Again, when we're looking at nutrition and weight loss, we wanna make sure that nutrition is doing most of the work and cardiovascular calorie expenditure is supplementary to that. Thank you.